Greetings fellow guitar travellers and musicians everywhere. It's Rowan J Parker here and welcome to another episode of Music Theory 101. An easy to understand and digest series of lessons which covers all the nuts and bolts of music theory. Everything you need to know as a guitar player or if you're not a guitar player, you need to know it as well. Um, today's lesson is all about a very misunderstood subject, much obscurantism about this subject and that is modes. So we're going to be delving into modes, exactly what they are, how they're constructed, where they come from and what you can do with them. So hopefully by the end of the lesson you'll have a fairly good theoretical grasp on exactly what a mode is. Now at this point I feel I should plug a forthcoming video which will be available very shortly. It's called Modal Magic and you'll be able to buy that in the store on my website. And this video will be centered towards guitar players and it will be one of the most comprehensive videos on modes ever produced with a running time of approximately three hours. I intend to cover modes in tremendous detail and they go into them at a level that's not really approached that often in other packages on modes I've seen. I've seen a lot of stuff um, about modes and unfortunately a lot of it isn't very accurate or it's not well laid out or it's not well explained and hopefully I can do a better job than that. So uh, yeah, when it's available I'll let you all know and please do check it out so it should be mega cool. Anyway, enough of plugging my forthcoming product, let's get straight into today's lesson which is modal theory off we go. Now in the last couple of episodes of Music Theory 101 we've been exploring how chords constructed and here's just a brief recap over those lessons. We looked at the scale of C major, the key of C major and we discovered that the key of C major produces these chords C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished and then C again. And then we furthermore discovered that if we expand this procedure to sevenths, we get these chords. We get C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven, G seven, A minor seven, B minor seven flat five, or B half diminished. And then back to C major seven. So what we're doing there is we're constructing chords on each consecutive scale degree. Well, let's apply this idea or procedure not to chords, but to the scale itself and see what happens. If we start in the first degree of the scale, which is C, and we play from C to C, we will get this sound. Which should be instantly recognisable to you as the C major scale, as a very strong C major sound. Now, we've all come across that scale. What you probably don't appreciate is that inside the scale there are various other sounds lurking and these are in fact the modes. So let's do this. Instead of starting the scale on its first degree, which is C, let's start the scale on its second degree, which is D, and play from D to the D one octave above. So in this case we'll get these notes. Which uh, just for clarity is D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Now it should be fairly obvious to you that that does not sound the same as the major scale, as the C major scale, which seems a bit paradoxical because it does in fact contain all the same notes as the C major scale. The C major scale contains C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and the scale we've just played is D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. So it is the same note, so why do they not sound the same? The reason that they do not sound the same is that you're not emphasising the same note as being the home or the tonic note. And so you're hearing all the notes in the scale in relationship to the note that you perceive to be the tonic. So even though they are the same notes, they don't sound the same because the starting note is different. And that fundamentally is what a mode is. A mode is an inversion of a scale. Or to put it another way, you're going to change the note in the scale that you regard as the tonic or the principal note or the strongest note and that will cause all the note relationships within the scale to change and will cause the internal sound of the scale to change. So extrapolating this forward a little bit, if we consider that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes in a major scale, we must be able to generate one of these scales on each step of the scale. And in fact, we can do that. So how many modes are there? Well, the same number as there are notes in a major scale, i.e. seven. 
there are seven modes. So now we understand what a mode is, it's just emphasizing a different note in a scale. Let's just go ahead and listen to the sound of all the others. If we start now on the third degree of the scale, which in the key of C would be E, and play E to E, let's listen to the sound that we generate. Now actually that's quite remarkable because that has got an extremely different sound from the C major scale. Let's just go back to our C major scale again and play that. And then the C major scale starting upon its third degree would sound like this. Now I think your ear will tell you that sounds like two completely unrelated sounds and they are to a large extent completely separate sounds but they are part of the same overall scale, the same overall master key which is C major. So that's the great power of modes because all the modes sound very different and you can apply or leverage each mode to create different sounds but in effect what you are playing is fundamentally just a major scale which is why modes are so powerful. Alright let's proceed to the fourth step which would be F in the key of C and play from F to F. Sounds like this one. Again, sounds different, right? I'm moving on to G, the fifth degree. Play G to G. Sounds different again. And then moving on again to A. Another different sound. And then finally on B. particularly dark sounding one and that is all seven of them because if you go up another step you'll merely return to C one octave higher. Alright so that's how you generate a mode. Now let's talk about the names of these modes and I'm sure you've heard these names bandied about before like Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Mixolydian Oh, sounds like a bunch of crazy gobbledygook. It sounds like a foreign language. And actually, the interesting thing is it is a foreign language. These names, or the majority of them, are actually the names of ancient Greek peoples. So, from classical Greece is where we derive a lot of these, these names, such as Ionian and Dorian and Phrygian, because they were ancient Greek tribes. Now, obviously, the music we play today has got nothing to do with their music because we've got no way of knowing what the music of that time sounded like because obviously they didn't have recording equipment so they couldn't record it and nor did they have music notation so they couldn't write it down so that music is lost to us and we've got no idea what it sounded like however these names and the ideas of classical Greece migrated to Europe in the Middle Ages in the Dark Ages and when the study of music was a province of the church during that time, they adopted these names. So although they had no idea what the music sounded like, they were influenced by the ideas of the ancient classical world and that's why we ended up using these mad Greek names for the modes. So these modes were originally known as the church modes and I'm just gonna give you the modes in the order in which they appear. So starting on the first degree of a major scale, which is the major scale, Its modal name is Ionian, the Ionian scale or Ionian mode. Now, so you realise that whenever someone says, I'm playing in C Ionian, what they really mean is it's just C major. It's the same thing. So C Ionian is C major, G Ionian is G major. They sound exactly the same because a C major scale runs from C to C and the Ionian mode also runs from C to C. So they are, for all intents and purposes, the same thing. You just have an alternative name for describing your major scale. Now you can call it the Ionian mode. Now moving on to the second degree of the scale, in this case starting on D in the key of C, running D to D. This scale is called Dorian, this is the Dorian mode and it has a particularly dark flavour. It's one of the minor modes, so we'll see in a little while. Quite a pleasant melodic sounding mode. Mode 3, which in this key starts upon E. This is called Phrygian and it's uh, spelled with a silent P so it's not F-R-I-G, it's not Phrygian, it's Phrygian or sometimes pronounced Phrygian and it's uh, spelled P-H-R-Y-G-I-A-N with a silent P. So Phrygian, particularly interesting sound, dark sounds, sort of, uh, a lot of people think it sounds a bit Spanish I suppose. And uh, 
Next one, mode 4, running F to F in this key. This one is called a Lydian, Lydian mode. Moving on, mode 5, starting on G in this key. This is the Mixolydian mode, Mixolydian scale. And then moving on again, we've got the sixth mode, which is called Aeolian. Now you may also know this scale as natural minor. That's one of the other ways that it's described, especially if you play a rock guitar, you almost certainly have come across the natural minor scale before. It's very, very common in all sorts of hard rock. Its modal name is Aeolian. It's also sometimes called, the scale is also sometimes called pure minor. Now this is usually described this way by jazz players who refer to natural minor or Aeolian as pure minor to differentiate it from the Dorian mode that they habitually play on minor chords. A brief digression there. And then the last mode, the weird sounding one, which runs B to B is this one. And that is called Locrian. All right, so that's the seven modes. We have Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and Locrian, all right? Now that is a lot to remember, so how can we possibly remember all this gobbledygook? Well, here's a little rhyme that you can try. If Dora plays like me, all's lost. Let me give you that again. If Dora plays like me, always lost, and it's a quick and easy way to remember the modes. So just to recap one final time, mode one, same as C major, is C Ionian. Mode two, Dorian. Mode three, Phrygian. Mode four is Lydian. Mode five is Mixolydian. Mode six is Aeolian. Mode seven is Locrian. And then of course we're back to Ionian again. To really appreciate how each mode sounds and why it sounds the way it does, we need to play the mode against its harmonic backing. So let me try and explain that a little bit. In the key of C major, we know that the first chord in the key of C major is a C major triad or it's a C major seventh chord if we expand it to a seventh. So if we lay down a C major seven chord and then we play our C Ionian scale against it, we'll have a true picture of exactly how this mode sounds. So this is how it would sound. And I think you can hear from that that it's a particularly happy, pleasant, melodic sound. It's a sound that we're very familiar hearing. So when you hear major scale melodies, Ionian melodies, they can sound uplifting, they can sound triumphant. They can also sometimes sound a little bit cheesy and a little bit twee. It is sort of the nature of the major scale for it to sound a little bit like, um, you know, that sort of thing. So this is why you find them in a lot of nursery rhymes and children's songs and popular songs, folk melodies. But I mean, if you think about almost any tune, um, any popular tune, the chances are that it is based on the major scale, it's based on the Ionian mode. So let's give you the sound one more time. Sounds like this. All right, that's the sound of C Ionian. To really appreciate the sound of Dorian, we need to play it against its Dorian-specific chord. And in the key of C major, that would be the chord built on the second degree of the scale, because the Dorian mode is built on the second degree of the scale as well. So the second chord in the key of C, if we expand it out to a seventh, would be D minor seven. And if we lay that down and then play our D Dorian scale against it, D to D, sounds like this. Now the qualities of Dorian are obviously it's a minor sounding mode, but it's not a particularly dense or dark sounding minor mode. It's one of the brighter sounding minor modes. In fact, it is the least dark of the minor modes. Another way of putting it is the brightest minor mode. It's still minor, so it means it's dark, but it's not overly dark. So, Dorian. Uh, this is the scale of choice for many, many jazz players, fusion players. It's probably the most commonly played scale in those sorts of music. Um, it's a very passive sounding mode. Every note in the mode sounds good and it's got this particularly kind of jazzy, funky feel to it. So, absolutely great sounding mode. Let's look at the third mode now, which was our slightly dissonant Phrygian mode. So the chord that represents Phrygian in the key of C major would be E minor or E minor 7. So if we lay down an E minor 7 chord 
and then play our E to E scale or E Phrygian scale again. So this is what it should sound like. So I think you can hear from the quality of that one that it's a particularly dark and haunting sound Phrygian. Uh, to me it sounds quite wistful, it reminds me of, um, I don't always feel like a sense of loss when I hear Phrygian, you can imagine it being in some sort of dramatic part of a film where, you know, the hero's love interest has just died or something like that. But it's a particularly beautiful mode. It's quite underused Phrygian. You do hear it quite a bit in, uh, in Spanish music from Andalusia, um, which has a Moorish influence, but those sort of uh, sounds are actually more based on harmonic minor. What's called pure Phrygian versus a scale called Phrygian dominant, which we will encounter in some other lessons, has got a very, uh, starkly beautiful scale I would say, much underused but a great sounding mode. Alright so that's Phrygian, one of the dark ones, a minor mode. Let's move on to the next mode, mode 4, which is Lydian. Now Lydian is represented by the fourth chord of the key of C, in the key of C, which would be F major or F major 7, this chord. And then playing the Lydian scale sounds like this. So for me, Lydian is clearly one of the major sounding modes, but it has a sort of floating or suspended quality to it. So it avoids the outright cheesiness of the major scale, but still has this lovely sort of floating melodic sensation when you play it. And uh, it's again quite a passive mode. Everything seems to sound good in Lydian, which is uh, why it is used quite extensively. A couple of uh, notable rock guitar players use Lydian a lot, Joe Satriani and Steve Vai, great user of Lydian. In fact, he uses Lydian so much that he was at one time titled the Lydian King. Everything seemed to be Lydian from him. And you also hear Lydian quite a lot in uh, film music. I mean, you hear all the modes in film music all the time, but Lydian is, is used to create a sort of uh, sense of suspense, triumph, sort of um, yeah tension but still keeping a kind of optimistic sort of sound so that's Lydian. Moving on to the fifth mode fifth mode which is Mixolydian. And Mixolydian is represented in the key of C by G or G seventh, G dominant seventh. And here it is. Okay, so again you can hear that's more or less a brighter sounding mode, it's one of the major modes but it doesn't have quite the brightness of Lydian or the brightness of Ionian and this is because one of the intervals is flattened, we'll be coming into intervallic mode construction in a little bit. So um, you hear this mode a lot in blues, rock, blues, you also hear it leveraged in fusion and there's a lot of uh, popular folk melodies, especially Scottish and Irish folk melodies that use Mixolydian, it does have that particular sort of uh, sound, this sort of... Um, for instance here, a Beatles song called Norwegian Wood uses Mixolydian as the basis of its melody. Alright, so Mixolydian, one of the major sounding modes, but without the brightness or cheesiness of the major scale. And then moving on to mode 6 now. Mode 6 is called Aeolian. If you recall, that is the same as natural minor, or we can also call it pure minor. The chord that represents Aeolian in this key would be A minor or A minor 7. Sounds like this one. So if you've ever played any rock music whatsoever, you've probably heard that melody, that scale played many, many times because it is a fundamental mainstay of rock music. Rock music tends to be more geared towards minor keys because it's generally more aggressive to play in a minor key. So if you think of an example, a band like Iron Maiden, almost their entire exclusive output is written in the Aeolian mode. It's all natural minor stuff. And so, Great for rock music in here, it has this dark, sort of melodic quality, quite sort of, uh, I don't know, emotive. And here is the last mode, which runs B to B, and the chord it represents in this key will be B diminished or B minus 7 flat 5. Sounds like this one.
and I think you can hear that that mode is very darkly unstable and seems to sit quite uncomfortably. You can imagine that if you were you know, continually at that point of tension, it might get eventually quite unbearable. So we've covered all seven modes. One of the interesting things to say is that six out of the seven modes, that is the first six, are used often, all the time. You hear them all over the place. Locrian, the last mode, mode seven, is used comparatively less frequently. And I'll just go into the reason for that a little bit. All the other chords that we've come across are either major or minor fundamentally. C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, but seventh degree, seventh chord is diminished. And so the qualities of each of the modes is analogous to the qualities of the chords. So for instance, the first chord, C, C major, Ionian is a major sounding mode, fundamentally. D Dorian, Dorian is a minor sounding mode. Phrygian, E Phrygian, minor sounding mode. Lydian is a major chord, major sounding mode. Mixolydian, another major chord, a major sounding mode. Aeolian is a minor sounding mode, but you can clearly hear the diminished chord. Locrian is a diminished sounding mode. So that's the reason for its comparative lack of use. It is used, you hear jazz is playing it quite often on minor seven flat five chords, but it's usually on a journey somewhere else rather than being a fixed point. Okay, so hopefully we understand now a little bit more about why the modes sound the way they do. As a last thing, I'm going to delve into what's called intervallic construction for modes so we can really zoom in upon exactly why each mode sounds the way it does. Let's do that. That concludes our look at modes for today. So far we've looked at modes in a way that I describe as parental, relating everything to a parent or master major scale. And this helps us to understand where the modes come from, but it doesn't really help us to understand why they sound as they do. And that will be the subject of next week's episode, where we're going to be looking at modes not parentally, but in parallel, i.e. against each other, and going into the intervallic construction of the mode, and that way we will really understand why each mode sounds the way it does. Okay, well, that's it for this lesson. I'd like to encourage you to have a look at my website, www.roundjparker.com. There's tons of free guitar stuff on that site, tons of lessons, backing track, various other cool stuff. There's also a store where you can buy things. Um, you can also contact me if you would like some Skype lessons. Um, I've got quite a number of Skype students now. Other ways uh, you can contact me or get a hold of my stuff, I'm on SoundCloud at Rowan-Parker. I have a Facebook page which you can like, which is Rowan J. Parker. And uh, yeah, well obviously you know about my YouTube channel, it's Rowan J. Parker, so there's tons of guitar stuff on that as well. Alright, well that will do. I'll see you next week for part two of Modal Goodness. Till then, farewell. <laughs>